Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light of darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness.
May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Amen. Cultivating Confession. Let us confess together. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. A reading from Psalm 32, verses 8 through 11. I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Do not be like a horse or a mule without understanding, whose temper must be curbed with bit and bridle else it will not stay near you. Many are the torments of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds those who trust in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. and a reading from Matthew 7, verses 24 through 29. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Now, when Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as their scribes. Grace and peace to you from God our Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the giver and sustainer of our faith, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Last night was my meeting night, my virtual meeting night, with Parish Education Committee, Lead Team, and Executive Committee. As our lead team met, we continued to work on planning for the congregational retreat that is scheduled to at the beginning of June. It's hard to focus on planning and working ahead when so much emotional energy is focused on maintaining just day to day, when there is so much uncertainty. But we forged on, and it was good to check in with each other and to see each other, to laugh together and pray with each other. It filled my spirit with joy. And we will continue working uh, to that possibility of coming together, probably virtually, uh, probably with a Zoom coffee hour. I know you want to hear from one another and see each other and check out how you're doing. Uh, Being here in the church uh, without you is just not the same. 
and we mark our week, the beginning of our week with worship. And it's hard to find our bearings without first centering ourselves in God with worship and praise. The whole world has been disoriented by a tiny but powerful virus. Context changes everything. Today's April 1st, April Fool's Day, and our nation is struggling with finding humor. And even pranks are called off because we're so disoriented that we struggle to find humor and people might not be so forgiving of pranks these days when stress runs high. We may not be April Fools, but we are fools for Christ. I laughed when I was first planning this cultivating confession midweek series, when I saw how we finished with confession by delighting in God's will and walking in God's way to the glory of God's holy name. Because who would think that doing all this hard work of examining our sins and transgressions and iniquities and deceit and asking for, for forgiveness would result in delighting in God's will and walking in God's way. But we know that to be so true. Cultivating confession the turning over of this ground, taking a good look at ourselves and our relationship with God and our relationship with our neighbors brings us back to the place of what God's good news does to us, brings us to the heart and center of God's love, looking to the one who has the power to heal, to forgive, and to lead us so that we delight and walk in God's ways. We recognize how hard the soil of our hearts can be, almost like a rock. We struggle with confessing our captivity to sin or trusting God's ability to forgive us or God's desire to forgive us. How many times do we think, oh, I don't need God's forgiveness or we're not good enough to receive what God wants to offer us? The ground of our hearts is hard. We proudly trust in our own mental or physical power to meet life's challenges, thinking ourselves as self-made people who can figure out our own problems and do things by our sheer inventiveness and grit. Or we fearfully distrust that we have any real good in us, despairing, and not thinking that we have the personal power to meet life's challenges and indulge in self-pity. But thinking too much of ourselves or too little of ourselves is merely two sides of the same coin. This is the orientation of our lives, and this is exactly where God wants to build and create in our lives, right at the very heart of the hardness of our hearts. We turn to God, recognizing that God, what God does to us and through us, the forgiveness, this forgiveness that we ask for, opens us up to receive the abundant life that God intends for us, life that delights in God's will, life that wants to walk in God's way, the life that has been given, the life that is gifted to us. What God wants for us is to delight in what God delights in and to walk with God. The cultivating of confession reorients us back to our Creator. We trust that God can do something that we cannot do ourselves, something like create new hearts in us, restore a right spirit within us. We trust that God gives us life, abundant life, full life, even when we are broken and falling apart, 
God comes to us, tends to us, tends to the soil of our lives, building a foundation that is strong, strong, loving us, filling us with his grace and mercy, and delighting to walk with us. This is the ground that God builds upon. God meets us at our very weakest points, those parts of our lives that are falling apart, and builds a foundation that is strong, strong even in the midst of great and mighty storms and the wild spread of a tiny little virus. Amen. Cast the mighty down. 
down from their thrones and uplifted the humble of heart. You have fed the hungry with wondrous things and left the wealthy no part. Great and mighty are you, O faithful one. Strong is your justice, strong your love. As you promised to Sarah and Abraham, humbly in the land of hope, you have been the flames of greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your servant here and blessed me. and merciful God, source and grounds of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God. Praise and praise to you. May God create. 